Throughout America's history, the Liberty Bell embodied the ideals of freedom to a myriad of social movements. Originally dubbed the Pennsylvania State House Bell, the Liberty Bell rang and resided first in the tower of the Pennsylvania State House. In 1753, the year the State House was finished, Whitehall Chapel Foundry in London cast the original bell, but within weeks of the bell's first use, problems arose with its integrity. Pass and Stowe, owners of a local Philadelphia bell foundry, received the assignment to recast the bell. Beginning in the 1750s, the Pennsylvania State House bell tolled to announce news and gatherings throughout the city of Philadelphia. Following the French and Indian War, the relationship between American colonists and Great Britain declined quickly. Despite the colonists' faithfulness to the crown during the war, the British Parliament forced higher taxes upon the colonists to pay for the debts incurred during the conflict. With the passage of the Revised Sugar Act in 1764 and the Stamp Act in 1765, the American colonists quickly grew agitated with the new taxes. Within the city of Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania State House Bell gathered citizens for announcements of laws from Great Britain. The colonists associated the chiming of the Pennsylvania State House Bell with unwanted, tyrannical legislation from a parliament where they were not represented. As history progressed, the Liberty Bell remained a beacon of freedom. Across the top of the bell is the biblical passage, Leviticus 25.5. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. This statement inspired the famous abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison. Although the exact person remains undetermined, historians credit the abolition movement with giving the Pennsylvania State House Bell its new name, the Liberty Bell. Abolitionists used the Liberty Bell as literal inspiration. The Friends of Freedom, an abolitionist group headquartered in Boston, chose to name their annual publication the Liberty Bell. Each year, the cover of their publication used images to protest the evils of slavery. The American Movement for Women's Rights began in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848. This early women's rights movement focused primarily on the right to vote, yet their desire was for women to receive equal treatment in all areas of society. The relationship between the women's suffrage movement and the Liberty Bell began when Mrs. Charles Wister Ruschenberger paid for the creation of the Justice Bell. The Justice Bell was an exact replica of the original Liberty Bell and traveled throughout the United States garnering support for the women's suffrage movement. The clapper on the bell was chained so that the Justice Bell's first toll would be when women received the right to vote. Ruschenberger said, The original Liberty Bell announced the creation of democracy. The women's Liberty Bell will announce the completion of democracy. In the 1960s, all of America found itself steeped in a heated battle for racial equality. Throughout the country, many African Americans could not vote due to illegal racially motivated practices. After the turmoil that unfolded during the famed 1965 Civil Rights March in Selma, Alabama, a group of University of Pennsylvania students organized a sit-in at the Liberty Bell. In March 1965, the students passed out flyers to raise support. Their intent was to capture the attention of the national media, and they did. Their sit-in evolved into a sleep-in, and by August of 1965, the Voting Rights Act was passed. While it did not end discrimination, it made discrimination at the polls illegal. Throughout its history, the Liberty Bell has been associated with many social movements. Presently, we still see logos and advertisements featuring this hallowed old bell as a symbol of American freedom. As time passes, the Liberty Bell will continue to shine as a beacon of hope, equality, and liberty for all.